Uh, firstly, uh, great to see everyone here. Thank you for coming. Uh, much respect to Mark and his team. It's great to have the um, you know one of Samoa's greatest athletes, David Tua, involved in this as well. So a lot of respect. Uh, but um, just like Mark knows, um, respect is earned in the ba on the battlefield. And uh, on Saturday we go to war. So I'm really looking forward to it. I've, I've left no uns you know the same cliches, uh, but I have because that's how much I respect Mark and what he brings to the table. So um, it's been a great preparation. Yes, there's always nerves, um, anxiety and whatnot, but funny thing is, sometimes you question yourself, why are you doing this sport? Why am I doing it? I'm almost 40, got four kids. Uh, I'm pretty content in my life, but then as soon as it's over and you walk through that and you get through it, it's like, when is it next? You know, so um, that's why we're here. Mark, you know what a good preparation looks like and it feels like? You look and feel a whole lot different to the last time we saw you. Run us through your preparation. You've been to Thailand and you've dropped near on 28 kilos. Yeah. Um, hey everyone, thanks for coming. I um, started this camp at 157 kilos. You know, I um, <laughs> it was this is a good opportunity for me to, for me to get back to being healthier person and enjoying life. Um, you know, one of my trainers here, Mal, I met her in Thailand and I've uh, been trying to get rid of her ever since. I, don't, <laughs> I saw her. <laughs> On the, on the way here, and it's like crazy, but uh, yeah, I've, I've lost a lot of weight. I'm looking, for, like I said, I respect Sunny, and I put my training camp first for there, I think. And um, you know, this is not my first race, it's like my 500th. It's been a long, long journey. Um, I'm pretty happy it's going to be ending here at home here in Sydney um, against someone like Sunny. Um, I respect the man, um, of course, as a phenomenal athlete, but uh, as he's already said, he left to earn my respect as a fighter. You mentioned it's been a long journey, it certainly has, and that is in favour of you. Sonny hasn't got that experience. How big a key is experience in this fight? Well, on the fight side, I think Sonny hasn't faced anyone as, 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 as tough as I am. I mean, he's uh, used to the big lights and the big stage. The fighting's different, and we all know that. Um, um, and we'll see uh, tomorrow, Saturday night, how it works out for him. You know, I, you know, my aspirations of being the world's best fighter have been already accomplished a long time ago in K1. Um, this is just another battle for me at the end of the day, and it's um, to be where I want to be against um, the real monsters of the business, um, against those, those grubby little dogs called UFC is where I want to get to. So, um, not like I'm overlooking Sonny, this is just um, another position for him to, for me to get in that position. Sonny, you really changed your preparation last time. Uh, there was a huge difference in your performance too. What's this preparation look like, mate? Yeah, it's been great. Um, I think uh, as an athlete, as a person, I'm always trying to evolve and get better. And uh, this camp's been no different. I've taken the gems that I got out of the last camp uh, with the Barry Orr fight, and um, you know, chucked out, flushed out the the rubbish that I that that, that happened. Uh, so I feel like this camp has been one of improvement, one of growth. Uh, unfortunately, couldn't have Andy Lee come over because he was training uh, Parker, the also Parker, for his Joe Joyce fight. Um, but we had uh, obviously Tony Mundine still involved, Chuck Mundine still running. We had Brother Muhammad from Brotherhood Boxing Gym helping out as, as well in Greenacre. So it's been it's been a a, a great camp. Um, and yeah, it's it's funny this fight game. You know, it's there's. There's so much emotions involved, involved, and um, I always try and look at things with a glass half full. And it's great to be able to put the spotlight on the sport once again in this in, in this country because there's some great young fighters coming through. But then also, it's great to um, be in a position where two Usos, two guys, proud Samoans, are going out there uh, risking it all, uh, but then also, you know, making a good wage from it too. So. I'm really happy about that, and uh, yeah, I just want to fight now, you know. Physically, you look a million dollars. You always have since debuting with the Bulldogs all those years ago. You've twice now mentioned the psychological or the emotional side. Have you learned to to uh, peak at the right time and to keep that in check? Because so many times in this brutal sport, the fight's actually won or lost before you get in the ring. Yeah, exactly. And, um you know, that's where Mark, Mark's experience, you can see, you know, he's, his demeanor, he's always calm, cool, collected. Um, and for me, that's what I bank on too. I just try and bank on the experiences I've had and the, 
sporting uh, world, the highest place in rugby and rugby league. I try and take those gems from that and bring it into this space. And um, at the end of the day, um, it's just me and him in the ring, you know. At the end of the day, it's just me. It's, at the end of the day, I don't have any teammates to teammates to rely on to push in and take that short ball, or make that tackle for me. So um, that's pushed me to, I guess, new barriers, new boundaries. This uh, this fight camp and. I'm very grateful to still be able to do this at, at my age um, on this type of level. So, yeah, it's, exci it's exciting, it's daunting, and there's anxiety, all of it, but I uh, just want to get out there now, you know. Mark, the famous walk-off KO. Plenty have felt it, some don't remember it. Have you got one left? I've got a lot left, I'd say. <laughs> Hopefully I've got one on the weekend, uh, but, uh, yeah, of course. Open it up to David Tua here. Love to get the uh, the great man's thoughts. Dave, how's Mark looking? How's he prepared? Um, and what do you see his chances like? Uh, first of all, I've uh, taken the tour on Alofu Mlondangadele. Good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, it's an honour to be here uh, to witness uh, an amazing event. Uh, two of Samoan's greats, icon in their own rights. Uh, Mark reached out to me and said, I need a water boy. <laughs> so I said, yep, sweet, I'll be there. Uh, you know, I think it's an opportunity not to miss. Uh, he's in great energy, he's light on his feet, and I believe he's in a, a real good head space. He's happy. And respectfully, uh, you know, as they say, a happy fighter is a dangerous fighter. So, um, you know, it's going to be a, a good night. It's going to be a great night. It's going to be banging. I'm glad I'm not getting hit. Can you tell us about the other fight that you alluded to and how what that, that drug-free drug sport is for you? Are you talking about the UFC? I've uh, been up in a couple of lawsuits. I can go on all day if you want to stay here all day about them. Um, about uh, uh, an even playing field, to be honest. Um, uh, even pay. You know, um, uh, you know, for me, Muhammad Ali was the greatest boxer ever. Not because of what he did as a, a becoming the world champion, it's what he stood for, that bout that he stood for. Um, he brought the Ali Act into boxing and gave them the fighters half of that percentage. Whereas MMA and UFC, everyone that pays 77 bucks to, to buy that UFC to support that fighter, whether it be Volkanovski or whoever from this side of the world, or Izzy, this side of the world, they get whatever they made deal with Dana White with. They don't get half of that pay-per-view. That's one of the, the class action laws that I'm fighting with. The other side is the steroid side. When I, when I started this lawsuit, I said to Dana and them, um, can you just put a clause in my contract? Um, so if this guy, the next guy I'm fighting, he cheats, uh, then he gets zero money. Because I feel they shouldn't earn any money. Um, um, they wouldn't do it. Um, I said, don't even give it to me. Just take it, don't give them a cent. But he said, no. Then they give me a, a, a little cocksucker, I mean, a little guy named Josh Barnett, you know? And um, I said, I don't, I don't like my clause in this contract, fight this guy, because he's been caught cheating. And, I, I, and they said no, and then two days later he popped. So then after that, they gave me a guy named Alistair Abram, he's like the worst, you know, horse guy, cheating guy. And I said no again, I said put a clause in my contract. You know what they said to me? They said no, and if you don't take this fight, we're gonna fire you. I said how are you gonna make a guy starve because of, his, uh, of my stance on this, on this unfair, uneven playing field? So I said, okay, I'll take the fight, then I dropped the lawsuit. That was seven years ago. You know, um, you know if, I, if I don't make it back from Vegas, if I'm putting a boot, well, you know who did it. Those little cocksuckers. Part of my French. <laughs> you are all welcome to attend the weigh-in, 12 o'clock here at the ICC tomorrow. Saturday night, we are back. And the bell rings, Mark Hunt versus Sonny Bill Williams, our headline act. Tickets are still available on behalf of SBW Promotions and Mark Hunt Promotions, and you can watch on Stan Sport. Thank you very much for your attendance. Have a wonderful day. Appreciate your time, guys. Fuck UFC, they suck. <laughs>